Whenever people gather in big groups, they need access to a water supply. The first revolution in urban water occurs in the Rome to supply water to people. The Romans created complex water system, including aqueducts, underground water pipes, and sewers. About 12th and 13th centuries, people adopted this approach to provide urban water services in cities like Paris, London, and New York. But it is much bigger and better water systems. However, it created a new problem, which is outbreak of disease such as cholera and typhoid fever to community that draws their water downstream. Therefore, second revolution of water system respond to these problems was to create drinking water treatment processes to safely use water from sewage contaminated rivers. Between the 1950s and 1970s, the third revolution in urban water systems resulted in the construction of the sewage treatment plants that eliminated the dead fish and noxious odors for downstream of the cities. Water and wastewater management for the city of Tampa serve as examples of a centralized system. Tampa is one of the main cities of the Tampa, St. Petersburg, Clearwater metropolitan area with a population of about 348,000 people. Most of the drinking water for the city is sourced from the Hillsboro River Reservoir, which is highlighted in blue. On the banks of this reservoir is the David L. Tippin Water Treatment Facility which treats about 64 million gallons of drinking water per day and has a 120 million gallon per day maximum capacity. This water treatment plant consists of several processes, all necessary to remove constituents to produce a safe, reliable effluent. Constituents of concern consist of organic matter and suspended solids. This treated water is sent out to about 588,000 people for consumption throughout Tampa and some surrounding communities. Once used indoors, wastewater is piped through a sewer system to the Howard F. Curran Advanced Wastewater Treatment Plant, which has an annual flow of 54 million gallons per day, of which 13 million gallons per day are recycled. Within the plant, Processes are used to remove constituents from the water. These include solids removal, biological organism removal, nitrogen removal, and finally, the addition of chlorine for disinfection. The sludge resulting from the removal of constituents is either sent to produce energy for the plant or used as a soil amendment. Once treated to an acceptable standard, this treated effluent is sent to the Hillsborough Bay. There are still issues that can be addressed to improve the sustainability of centralized systems. One of these issues is source water quality, as source water will affect how a water treatment plant operates, which is especially the case with a surface water-based system. For example, retention ponds are used to minimize the amount of runoff, thus aiding in maintaining nearby water quality and even reservoir quality if located near an urbanized area. Inside of the plant, treatment chemical substitution with a less energy intensive chemical may significantly minimize the amount of energy associated with water treatment. Urban planning can also play a role in minimizing the energy associated with distribution. Well-designed communities need less pipe material and less pumping power due to shorter distances. At the home, certain water conservation practices have been and can be implemented to minimize water usage. 
Also, reclaimed water can be used for non-potable applications such as irrigation. There is even growing interest in reclaimed potable water. For instance, in Singapore, a wastewater treatment plant has treated water to a degree that it is safe to drink and is up to 3% of the country's drinking water. Another example is in San Diego, where a demonstration was carried out that would treat wastewater for its subsequent addition to the city's reservoir. Sometimes centralized systems are not the best solution for every situation. Decentralized water management can help these challenges to assuring adequate water management and healthy ecosystems into the future. Decentralized systems range from simple septic tank systems to more complex cluster systems. Decentralized water systems can provide benefit. Economically, this can avoid large capital cost and reduced operation maintenance cost. Also, it allows to promoting business and job opportunities. Environmentally, it requires less energy with proper water quality, so that it protects the community's health and reducing conventional pollutions. Rodan County, Virginia was struggling with population growth. They decide to use decentralized water system. They use a cluster system that includes a large central water reuse plant and several satellite facilities. This allows to preserve county's rural areas as well as to grow population. Warren Bertmurt use a cluster system in which each residence has a septic tank that connected to a central treatment area and disperser field which are used for collection and treatment of wastewater. So, Warren was able to preserve their community's character and independence. Decentralized water system also used in urban areas. In Battery Park, New York City, several buildings use water reuse and conservation system, as well as green roof to capture storm water. Thus, by application of decentralized water system, they are able to create sustainable urban development and maximize property values. Climate change, population growth, migration, and urbanization will all put additional stress on existing drinking water and sanitation systems in the future. Therefore, it is important to think outside of the box in order to address these challenges. For instance, water availability may force communities to consider alternative water systems, such as household rain collection. Also. Centralized water systems can incorporate materials and energy recovery, thus reconsidering wastewater as an opportunity more so than a waste. For instance, algae from wastewater treatment plants can be harvested to produce fuel. Also, struvite precipitated from wastewater can be used as an alternative soil amendment for agriculture. According to David Sedlak, a more ideal future may employ hybrid systems where materials and fuel recovery from a centralized wastewater treatment plant may exist alongside decentralized water management such as composting toilets, rainwater collection, and on-site treatment. 